did that, you just fuck up the road. You mean big ass blocky ass wood ass wood bridge? And he probably could have gone caught on fire, but none of us were retarded enough to do it. What do you mean by that? Of course, no one's retarded enough to burn down the wooden bridge. No, because some people had a probably station. Angel. <laughs> well, there's no ocean to cross anymore, so... Oh, no, there's a lot of ocean. Like jungles and swamps. I just have a big river. That's all. Wait, whose house is this? Pro, pro's property. Oh, I found Pro's property when I was trying to look for it. Second, nice house, bro. You, you should see... The sky dock. <laughs> the sky dock. Get, 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 get away from me. I can see the sky dock from my house. It's <laughs> intimidating. I just feel like it's gonna come crash on me one day. Uh -oh. I wouldn't it be amazing if they came up with a setting that gave like real physics. So if you didn't have like everything that's just hanging too far out would start to crack and break. Like I think, I think it would be an interesting way to play a world like this, and then turn the physics on and watch everything come tumbling down. Like to see who actually could design stuff that would hold up. We're pro built. What's a good place to build this? Oh, it's actually nice. Yeah, it's a pretty nice spot. But yeah, what if? Uh, including with the logic stuff, what if when you stepped on a floating structure, you could see it dip down and back up every time you could... Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I I know now that Microsoft have, have got the rights to the game and they own it, and they even talked about the fact that they really want to do stuff kind of like... Not just keep throwing new texture packs out and patches on this game, but literally coming out with like a Minecraft 2 down the road. They think the, the players uh, could could handle having it. still keep the square block look of it, but really change it up. It could be so much more. I mean, like we talk about here on the show all the time. Why isn't this game Infinite Worlds? Why doesn't it have like 30 people lobbies? Because the PS3 could run that hands down. This game doesn't even tax 25% of the PlayStation and only takes up 2% of the Blu-ray disc. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Isn't it in the world? Oh, so, I mean, if you were to put this on the, the PS3 and PS4, you could do so much more. But, like I said, Mojang was getting burnt on this game in 4J Studios. They were just like, we're done. We're done. We've made our billions. We've we served our millions. We are done with this fucking game. You watch him at fucking the Minecon in Florida in 2012 and 2013. They just look burnt. They, they're just burnt on, you know, people are asking them questions and they just want to put the bullet in their head. You know, they're just like, we're done with it. And I get that. You know, it's hard for people that, that create art and living worlds and games to be working on the same game for four or five years, six or seven years, ten years. I mean, even great games like Elder Scrolls and stuff, you see them get burnt out and they're like, we just put nine years of our life into this game and we're done. <laughs> so we want to go, we want to make something else. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what Mojang or, or 4J are going to go do because they're going to either they're either going to try to come out with something that's similar to Minecraft and fail or they're going to try to go too far away from Minecraft and fail. It's really hard when you're an out of nowhere studio that has such a niche game to, to you know, step away from it. And it's not like they're making the sequel. They sold the rights to it, the name, the character, the music. They're never going to be able to make a, anything off Minecraft down the road. So they don't need to. They're rich. So, you know, they, it's one of the most profitable games in history. This game was designed overnight, people, by a kid who did it for homework for his – not a kid, but a young adult – who did it for his homework in, in game design school. Now, it's, it's, I'm sure that version was horrible even compared to the original Minecraft. I'm sure Minecraft got – quite some touch-ups before its original commercial release but needless to say i mean 
you know, God knows what Microsoft or a big studio, let's just say a random studio, let's say Bungie or Rockstar were to make Minecraft 2. Like, you know, the engines that, what that we've seen them do with other games put into this. And like I said, if you guys haven't seen this game, go to Twitch TV right now. If you're watching me, stop. Go to the game listings and look for EverQuest Landmark and watch some of the streamers play that. And you'll be like, shit, fuck Minecraft. Fuck it to hell. Like, it's Minecraft, but play looks just like Skyrim and plays just like Skyrim. You know? You make you, you dig out of the ground the minerals and then you make a sword. You get the enchantment table built and you enchant it. But then the people that are playing the EverQuest role playing game can actually buy your stuff. So you can be like, I crafted, you know, Hawk Moon the sword that does plus five, plus six, some random shit, whatever. And the number one player in EverQuest bought it from me and went off to win the PvP arena. Now everyone wants weapons from me, so I'm constantly out, like, forging weapons. That's something I would love to have in a role-playing game. I would love to be able to craft a weapon in Skyrim and sell it in Elder Scrolls Online and, like, sell it to the, the marketeer and then see some other player, like, killing somebody with it and be like, dude, I made that sword or that bow. This game's kind of that way. Like, somebody can make a really badass diamond sword and give it to someone else, but that's as far as it goes. PC, of course, anything's possible, you know. <laughs> so, you know. That's, that's like saying, you know, PS4 versions of games are better, you know. It's like, we all know that. PC version of this game can do just about anything. You can find a mod or a glitch or a lobby or something that has everything you know i've watched people play minecraft on twitch where they're flying in worlds where they have flying griffins and mounts and all kinds of stuff even in the minecraft i was playing there on pc before creation uh reneged it back i the world i was playing in had like modified stuff and it. it wasn't just a different texture pack it had you know different physical engines and i played that one with you fear that had like the class well, permitted cities and stuff. There are two towns in this world, too. Sigma's living in the desert town, and then right around the corner is the big concrete cobblestone city. Um, people are welcome to live in the city, but the residents seem to despawn when we do. The residents actually have some pretty good trades now, including enchanted armor, chainmail armor, and silk touch books for trade for, like, wheat. <laughs> so I've I've got a house in the city I can sleep in in case I need to, but that's as far as I've been going. I need one more obsidian to build an ender portal down here. Lollipop. You know, this game, like I said, I like the block aspect of this game. It throws a, a shout out to all of our childhoods of playing with blocks and Legos. But that's where it stops. You can easily design a game with smoother servers, bigger servers, more detailed, and then, of course, animated blocks. You know, like you were saying, blocks that dip when you step on them, you know. I think that's going to be the evolution into the next wave of Minecraft 2. I know that it's stupid to say we're not going to have a sequel to the game now that Microsoft bought it. Even their first 4OA, they started talking about what they wanted to do, and it really is a huge step. You know, they were like, flat out, Infinite Worlds could be on every console, hands down. Larger lobbies on both yeah, consoles, iOS hands down. It, that means we could have it. Yeah. I played Minecraft Pocket Edition on my iPad, and the worlds on there are infinite, horses, you know, like, and that shit came out like six months ago. <laughs> Hell, you can even, you can even play on worlds that have more players. You can, you can be on one internet and have four people, or you can go onto their server service and have, uh, 20 people or something so i mean it's, it's a bigger world even it's a little redunk a dunk and then, you know people go oh xbox you know got horses like a month earlier or whatever bullshit it's not the argument it's not xbox versus ps3 people psn it's when when you've got cell phones that have a better version of minecraft than the consoles you just gotta wonder you know but that's where mahjong and 4j really fucked up and missed the ball 
they tended to service whoever was playing it the most. As soon as iOS was the most played. Oh, I found the pit. I found the anus. Nice. It's not as big as I remember, but the trees are still growing down in it, which is cool. You're a tree. Alright, I'll meet you over there if you don't want to. Don't want these that shit. Go for it. Shovel, sword, shovel. I'm just trying to get down to the bottom right now. Oh, nothing, Lolly. We're just just talking about our normal, uh... Oh my god, there's not even a cave down here. It's just a straight old fucking pit. This would be a badass house, people. This jungle and uh, biome down here is still un untaken. That's why I've seen Chris, the lower right-hand corner. This jungle I'm in, it's still it's untouched. No one's really done anything here. I put a few torches into exploring. I found this the other day on the show, and I was trying to find it the other day on the show, and I couldn't find it again. That was kind of fun and sad at the same time. I just now made it down into the bottom of it, but it's... What, what would you guys say that is? Like, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10... 30 to 50 blocks deep. Probably 20 blocks across by 20 blocks. Straight down into the ground. You could just literally, like, put torches in it and put flooring in it and have a, like, five-story sunken house. It's pretty badass. But there's no caves in this. It's intriguing. It's. I never played a church attack. What the fuck is this? Steampunk. Steampunk. I know. I know steampunk. I know. I played. I played it a little bit. But never get a church attack. I'm just fucking confused. What is which? Because I played a lot of the Skyrim church attack and the Genesis search attack. Yeah, I like this. I, I don't like the Skyrim texture pack or the Skyrim world as much. It's kind of a waste of money, to be honest, for me. But uh, I really like the fantasy, steampunk, and the realistic. Just a realistic one. That's still my favorite animals. The animals look just so real in it. For blocky fucking animals. The sheep are scary, though. Their faces, yeah. They're like. They're kind of demonic. Oh, this goat was made by Satan. <laughs> this goat was made by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like I want to play. What was it? Ghost Room Simulator. Go oh game. my gosh, they made an RPG for Goat Simulator. Yeah, I know. I sat there and played that for two hours. Yeah. So you know what's really funny though is they have one called Rock Simulator where you just be a rock. They have a mountain simulator where you're just a mountain. Like, how do you be a rock? How does I've never rock played the rock one, but I played the mountain one. It's actually kind of fun because you gotta do things like manage your mountain. That's all. You're like, okay, you know, no trees on this side. I need some snow. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it was more fun than Goat Simulator. I'll tell you that much. Goat Simulator just looks too crappy for me to enjoy. The thing is, it's meant to be crappy. They literally... No, it wasn't meant it. to be crappy. It was just a low-budget indie game. I'll play it on my iOS because it's free on the iPads, but I'm not going to pay five bucks to play it on Steam and play it on a computer that can run like Daisy. <laughs> I, you know, like I said, people, you know, a lot of, a lot of you younger gamers, 25 and younger, you know, you, you didn't grow up like I did going through the only thing we had was the Atari 2600 and we wanted this. And so it's hard for a gamers my age, like 30 to 40 or older to, they, we might go back and play those games and go down memory lane, but we don't get the whole like, oh my God, I'm playing an old school retro game. But I really get that for you guys and your generation. We talked about it earlier on the show today, the 15 to 25ers um, who didn't start playing games until like the Xbox 360 was out, you know. It's never a one up, I'm be better and I got, it's just, those are the facts of our experience, talking about them, sharing them. You know, I got right here, right here in my hand, Atari 2600 controller. Boop, 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 boop. One button and a joystick. This is what I got to play with when I was like five years old, six years old. It was brand new. It cost $250 to buy an Atari 2600 when it first came out. <clears throat> I'm sorry, are you whispering to your boyfriend? 
No, no, uh, we were talking about something me and Bro. Uh, why'd you sound so scared, huh, Trev? <laughs> <laughs> it was because there's one side, uh, there's one side of, you, of me that <laughs> you guys don't want to see. There's one side you guys don't want to see. You're very bad. Because hate. it's so small? No, it's hard to see. No, never mind. Uh, can, can I tell you something? Yeah, yeah, yeah.